Hi, welcome to this channel. My name is René Hammel. I'm from Berlin, Germany, and some people consider me to be an expert for partial discharges. I've dedicated my whole professional life into testing partial discharges, and I was allowed to travel the globe, worked in dozens of countries to test partial discharges, give consultancy, or train people. Even though there are thousands of papers dealing with partial discharges, it's kind of hard to approach the whole matter. And the reason is that the majority of people who want to start with understanding partial discharges have a certain base knowledge. However, in order to be able to read technical papers, you need about this knowledge. And there are not so many sources, at least not so many sources easily accessible, that cover this gap. So my idea is to cover this gap in this video channel, at least for the first couple of dozen videos, to allow you to reach to here and then read the technical papers and then you don't need me anymore. While doing so, I'm going to use a lot of oversimplifications. Even though I understand it's a huge risk because oversimplification usually means that you're saying something inaccurate, but the idea is that once you have reached the level where you can read the technical papers, you can literally go back and say, well, this was not very accurate, René, and this was not very accurate, but I'm going to live with that. What are partial discharges? Well, obviously, it is two words. It is partial and discharge. So let's look at the discharge first. The majority of us, we have experienced discharges already. If you're having a thunderstorm and we have a cloud here and we have a ground here, we can actually have a flash going to ground from our cloud to the ground. And as we all know, it's kind of devastating when it hits the ground. There's a lot of dissipation of energy because a current is flowing. And if it hits a tree or a house, we know what can happen. So a partial discharge would be a discharge that only partially bridges the insulation, meaning it will try to reach ground, but it doesn't do it all the way. So obviously, we are not into weather phenomena. We are in high voltage devices. What is a high voltage device? A high voltage device is a device that is needed in order to run our power grid. We are creating energy at one point, we're usually transmitting it as high voltage towards the consumer. And in the baby in between, we have a lot of high voltage devices. It could be transformer, it could be rotating machines, generators, motors, it could be even overhead lines, or it could be cables. So speaking of overhead lines, most of us know what overhead lines are. We have seen them. They look different in different countries. And very often we have three or very often four cables hanging here there. And they're transmitting the energy. So a partial discharge would be if you have a discharge that happens around here. Very often it happens on the high voltage conductor and it's trying to go towards ground. As a matter of fact, these wires, they don't care so much about partial discharges because they're designed to withstand them. But especially if you have resistors here that help us hanging these wires, they don't really like take partial discharges too lightly. The problem with partial discharges is they create heat. It's very small, it's very localized, but the heat is somewhere in the area between 5,000 and 7,000 degrees. In this area, it doesn't even matter if it's Celsius or Kelvin, because the majority of the material on our Earth doesn't take it too lightly if it's exposed to a heat between 5,000 and 7,000. It's minimally altered, but very often damaged or destroyed. The majority of the insulation of our high voltage devices is not air, like in this case, but it is liquid or solid. So if partial discharges start, they start to destroy the insulation system. For air, that wouldn't be that big of a problem because we have wind and the wind would exchange and our insulation system would be exchanged. However, if you have a liquid insulation system or a solid insulation system, there is no exchange in, of an insulation system very easily. So partial discharges are sometimes considered to be a little bit like cancer on a high voltage insulation. It starts very subtle, but then it grows, grows, grows over time and it will destroy the insulation system and very often it will try to reach the other electrode. And once it has reached the other electrode, we're going to have a full discharge. And a full discharge on a high voltage device is not very funny. A full discharge of a high voltage device very often results in the destruction of the high voltage device. If you have a high voltage device that is connected to the power grid 
and it transports current and you have a full discharge, there's a lot of energy that is dissipated and usually it results in an explosion. So we could have human casualties and very often we have destruction of our other material. I'll give an example. Let's say we have a substation. In a substation we have usually sometimes overhead lines coming there. We have cables, we have transformers, these big humming things. Um, we have switch gears and we have current transformers, we have voltage transformers and then we have cables, we have intermension, all of these things. So let's imagine we have partial discharge on a transformer on a bushing. Very often they're made of porcelain. If you have partial discharges in your bushing and you don't know about it and it creeps further, further and further and there's a destruction of the bushing, it usually explodes and destroys a lot of other things around it. So it's not a very good thing for our high voltage network if we are not aware of the fact that partial discharges could happen and that we are not measuring them. So understanding partial discharges and being able to measure them is a huge advantage. We would be able to measure them, quantify them, characterize them and evaluate them and then we could give the owner of the high voltage device an idea about the state, about the health of their insulation of the high voltage device and then they can react on that. They can either take it out of service immediately if it's already severe and replace it or repair it or they can schedule maintenance or predictive maintenance which would help to keep our network safe. And that is the whole thing about partial discharges. Understand them, measure them and then do something with that. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next videos.